Post Game Show, brought to you by Viner Forgates and the big dog himself, Rick Jacklich, at the Jacklich Law Group. This is part two of the Big Dog Post Game Show. Joining us from the studio is Bruce Posner. Bruce, you've seen a lot of these games, and we've been through a lot of Maryland Duke. This one had to mean a little bit more, had to be a little special to you for this comeback. All right, wait. Uh, thanks for throwing it to me back in the studio, and I have to tell you something. This might not have been John Tillman's biggest win, but it was his greatest win. 14 to 11 over Duke. You get back to the final four, his 11th quarterfinal game, his 10th win. Can you imagine that? And of course, Maryland gets to 10 wins again, but his 10th win of the quarterfinal game. And the only one he lost was that controversial goal uh, to Virginia. And now real quick, it didn't seem possible for Maryland to win this game, Wayne, uh, with all the turnovers, the 20 turnovers, and the fact they were trailing five to one after one, eight to five at halftime, nine to seven after three. It, it just, it was like a surge, an offensive surge, and more important, a defensive surge. But to me, the biggest play of the game, or the biggest overall play, was shutting out Josh Sawada with uh, Zapatella. Brady O'Neill got his three goals, and uh, Dyson Williams got six. He was phenomenal. But when they needed to go at the end, they're down by two. And what happens? Tillman, Duke had called timeout. Duke had the ball. They had more than enough time to tie the game. And Tillman, Carcaterra says, oh, they're going to put uh, Zap on Brendan O'Neill to shut him down. No, he didn't do that. He kept him with Zawada. And this is what Tillman, I think it was in his mind that they were going to get the ball to Brendan O'Neill and Maryland threw three people at Brendan O'Neill. He shifts the ball to the middle. A guy takes a point blank shot on McDanny and the rest is history. Minute 32, Maryland over Duke to go to the final four. Andrew McAdory on the run. McDonald and Burleis turn back the Torrington finalist. I think once we settled in defensively, we were pretty solid. I mean, we got one of the best goalies in the country. So just having that trust in Logan McNaney, it's unreal. He makes the save. One thing leads to another. Terps go up by three, uh, adding to it on a goal at the end. But I think this goes down. All right. Tillman has always had Duke's number. He's lost to him a few times. Don't get me wrong. Lost to him in the final four, uh, but also beat him a few times. And here's the bottom line. You never thought Maryland could win this game. And I'm the most zealot favorite Maryland guy that there is, or certainly as much as anybody else. And the way that game started with the turnovers and the inability to get shots off and just, it was just unbelievable how they turned it around at halftime is incredible. What a tribute to Maryland and the coaching staff to beat a, uh, without question, a just super talented team at Duke. Uh, the best from the portal, the best from the from the from the players. You you know you get in Brendan O'Neill, uh, you know a tour time winner. The rest is said, but Brendan O'Neill now takes his treasures to the PLL. And here's the bottom of my last point: twenty for Luke Weirman, nine for Nasso. And they've been saying that Nasso has been better than Weirman. I know Nasso was banged up, so maybe it wasn't fair, but. Luke Wehrman was great, 14 to 11, Maryland on the Philadelphia. We'll await the winner tomorrow and have much more to talk about this during the week. Back to you, Wayne. Great analysis, Bruce. Thanks for joining in. And yes, you'll see all of us, Mason, Bruce, myself, from Philadelphia next week as the Turfs go to the 2024 Final Four. Good afternoon from New York.